Hello and welcome to Mastering in the Box. In today's video I'm going to show you my 2021 mastering template inside of Studio One 5. Hello and welcome to Mastering in the Box. I'm your host Smudge and in today's video I'm going to show you my 2021 mastering templates inside of Studio One 5. Now before we get into today's video, I just want to wish you all a happy new year. This is my first video of 2021, and I did consider doing a recap video of 2020, but given the year we've all had, I thought a lot of people may just want to forget about 2020 and move on. So one thing I will say is in 2020 was this is the year that I introduced this YouTube channel, and I do just want to say a thank you to everyone who's taken the time to watch the videos, to like them, to comment and subscribe to the channel. As of today's data, there are 493 subscribers and I can't thank you enough because all of your, your likes and your positive feedback has been really, really rewarding for me. So thank you to everyone who has taken the time to like, comment and subscribe. If you do want to know more about digital mastering and you're not subscribed to the channel, then make sure you subscribe below and make sure you also tick that bell and select all to receive notifications on all of our videos moving forward. And there'll be more, lots more coming in 2021. There'll be more details on the Mastering the Box membership scheme, which is going to be reintroduced very, very soon. I'm going to do a slightly different format on that, so more details to follow. And if you do want to support the channel, I'll leave links in the description down below of where you can support the channel by buying me coffee, because I can assure you on late nights I need lots and lots of coffee. So thank you very much, and here's to a fantastic 2021. So just to start this video, here I am inside of the Studio One project page and this is a, a page or a section of the program that's available in the professional version of Studio One and it's very much geared towards mastering and being truthfully honest and say hands up, I have an absolute love-hate relationship with the project page because it is absolutely fantastic for arranging the mastering projects and the metadata and the exporting of the files but the actual processing of the mastering is quite limited so when I say it's quite limited I can do a lot of the basic functions inside of the project page but anything that's more intermediate or advanced I'm very restricted to what I can do. So an example of which would be automation. There is no way to automate either volume or any effects parameters inside of the project page as of early 2021. There is also a lack of advanced editing features. And just to kind of give you a heads up of some of the great features that Studio One has on offer, so things like clip gain envelopes, things like the scenes and how we can use those as referencing, and also things like event-based effects and using event effects to really be able to manipulate the WAV files. None of that is available in the project page. And I got quite disheartened by it after a while, but I just stopped to think about the way I was using Studio One, and I just come to the conclusion that I've actually been using it wrong. And it's not wrong in a sense that the project page is insufficient. I just think we can really use Studio One in a much better and more efficient way to get a better mastering platform. So let me show you how. So here I am at the Studio One start page and rather than setting up a new project, I'm going to set up a new song. And whilst the song page is fantastic for recording and mixing, it is also such a fantastic tool for mastering. And we're going to use the pre-populated template that I've already set up, but just for illustrative purposes, I'm going to put the song title down as MITB Test. And the one thing that you want to do here is make sure that the song length is going to be sufficient for the total length of your project. So if you've got three songs and they're five minutes a song, then you want to set at least 15 minutes worth of song length. Always overcompensate here and I'll show you why a bit later. So just to really illustrate this purpose, I'm just going to put 25 minutes down and OK. I'm not worried about the tempo or the time signature, but I can just click and set up our song page template. Now as you can see here, I have the track inspector on the left hand side and I have the mix console on the right hand side. If I then press F3 to close the mixer and F4 to close the inspector and here we have a blank song page. 
And then what I'm going to do is just go through and say I'm just going to use this as an example. Let's import some songs. So I'm going to import files and just choose these three songs here. OK. And that is the basic song page template set up in standard song mode. I've, I've defaulted the track size to extra large, but just for illustrative purposes, I'll set it to medium. And there we are. And then we can minimize those waveforms down. So it's the song page set up in standard track format. Okay, the next step is to very much set this up how you would like it for your own workflow. So what do I mean by this? Now we can very much, we can just select any of these tracks, and we can move them along, so we can set the waveforms up here. But the way I prefer to work, I actually prefer to work with all of my tracks on a single a single line, all in a single track, effectively. So if I get this waveform here, I can actually drag that and move it up to the top track. And if I then get the third track or event, which I'll come on to in a second, I can click that and take that up even further. Now, I am not worried at this present moment in time about spaces. We can sort that out a bit later. But what I can do is then come down here and I can actually remove these tracks. So I now have the three songs on one track. And rather than referring to these as songs, I'm going to now refer to these as events, and you'll see why in a second. Now, some of you may be looking at this and thinking, well, how can we process those individual songs independently? Because now we've set them all up on a single track, we have to add the plugins to the track. So any plugin that I add is therefore going to affect all three songs or events. Well, that's not entirely correct if you use the Track Inspector. So if I press F4 to get the Track Inspector back up again, we have this here, which is the Event Effects, which is a fantastic tool for mastering. Because what it enables me to do is it enables me to select any of these events, and I can now process any of these independently. So for example, if I select event number two, and if I then press F5 to get my plugin browser, go to effects and let's take the stop limiter for example. If I want to put the stop limiter onto event number two, I click and drag onto event number two. But every time I click onto another event, you'll see that the plugin is no longer there. Because it's only going to process the event number two, which I have placed the limiter on. So likewise, if I click on event three and enable the event effects, there's no insert there. But click on the middle one, there's our limiter. And you use it in the typical Studio One way, click the, drag, the drop down and then remove as and when you see fit. So this gives us a great amount of flexibility, but really allows us to hone in on a, a really useful workflow for mastering. And I can go back down here and then click on the, the file size and then click extra large. And there we are again, and we've got our large waveforms for us to do whatever processing we need. So next step in my mastering template using the song page is the mixer channels or the mixer tool and I don't really need too much of the mixer tool available here because I can actually process each of the events individually and independently using the track inspector. So I was thinking about how can I incorporate the mixer into this mastering template and this is what I've done so far. So if I press F3 you can actually see that I've undocked the mixer. I've resized it so it now fits vertically and moved it all the way to the right hand side of the screen. Because all I really need here is the main out, I just need the master channel. I don't really need the the, the, the track inserts or the, the actual track um, showing in the, in the mixer at all. Because I've got it on the left hand side of the screen and I'm using the event effects to apply any plugins. So what I can actually do here is if I click on this little box here, the channel list, and I click this little circle, then it actually is going to remove the track from the mixer. The one thing I just need to make, make you aware of, you need to go into the settings, and there is this link visibility of track list and console. You will need to untick that box. So if that box is ticked, when you remove the channel from the, from the channel editor here, 
the will actually take away the waveform. So you just need to make sure you untick that box as well. And it just makes sure that we've got, for me it just looks a bit nicer. And I've got the full master channel here. So I've still got access to the master channel. If I want to put a master limiter on, I can do that here. Any monitoring I want to do, I can do that here as well. But I've still got access to everything else I need. So I can do my master effects here. I can do my independent event effects here, which allows for great flexibility. So now we have our basic mastering template set up in the song page, we can really start to get into some of the more advanced features that are on offer here. So for example, the, one of the things I love about Studio One is to have the Scenes function. And this is something that was a new addition inside of Studio One 5. And this Scenes will allow us to effectively almost save a screenshot of where we are in our master, we can then go and amend our settings and then save another scene and we can then compare the two. So for example, if I wanted to I wanted to boost the low end of this particular master, I wasn't too sure whether I liked it or not. What I can do here is go to the, the show scenes inside of the console area. I can apply some of the processing to the event effects, adding it here. I can then go and save it as a scene. I can then go back into the inserts amend either the EQ compression, whatever I've done to, to boost the low end, set it to a more moderate setting. I can then resave another scene and I can then go back and compare the two. And it's a really useful feature that we can use in mastering. And then if I come out of the mixer window, another great feature of using this as a mastering tool, if I click this little expand envelopes function here, I then have the volume automation lane. So I can then go through and add any automation that I wanted to do to the master. But it's also another really handy tool. And let's just say, rather than think about this as a standard mastering template, let's say we had a repair job and there was a particular part of the waveform that we needed to, say we need to reduce down part of the peak. If I click F2, I've now got the, the, the track inspector. And let's just say, if I then right click here, I've now got option to gain, use the gain envelopes. And if I wanted to just use, say this particular peak here, and I wanted to bring that down, if I highlight that area, you see the H, I can just click that, and it's just gonna then reduce that volume down on that one particular peak. So if you've got something in your waveform and you've got, say, a click or a pop or something accidentally, there's some background noise that you wanna reduce, you can use the click gain envelopes to start doing some repair work inside of your mastering template. So these are just three additional features here that we can use inside of the song page to really maximize our mastering workflow. So for me, the final piece of the puzzle is really around the, it's the final setup of the project and the metadata. And I'm not even gonna contemplate doing it in the song page because this is really where the project page comes into its own. But it's now we've done the processing inside of the song page, it is a really quick and easy process just to transfer it to the project page. And if we select the track and we go to song and we can add to a project so we can set up a new project. So if I do a new project, MITB test, that's fine. And then if we say, it's then gonna transfer those waveforms into the now this function is only going to be available inside of the professional version of Studio One. So if you're using an artist version, then you won't be able to do this step. But if you've got the professional version or you're using Sphere, then this is going to be available to you. We're going to have the, the whole waveform set up inside of the mastering page. And remember when I said here, we don't really need to worry too much around the fades or we don't need to worry about the the distance in between the songs. This is where we can do it all inside of the project page. And the way to do it here is very simply, we select where we want to set the, set the clip. So if we want to trim the clip here, we can then right click on the waveform and then you've got split event at cursor, split track at cursor, or split track and event at cursor. And very simply, if we then split track and event at cursor, there. It then sets that track one will be our first song, Track two will be the second song. And if I set another clip there, right click, split track and event at cursor. And then we can then manipulate these as we go through. We can cut, trim, we're gonna to start to add fades and get the final project set up as we'd like it. We don't need to do any of the processing because the processing is already done. And we can go through here, we can individually set the metadata for the songs and we've got overall control of the metadata for the EP album as well. And then once we've done all that, we say we can just literally just trim all the tails, 
come down here, right click, split event at cursor, that I'm actually going to delete. We can get rid of that and it moves it back up there. And then there's also an option here, we can then uh, reset track markers to content there and it brings it all back down here. So that's a nice, simple, easy way just to import it into the project page and you can split it all and set all your, your spaces in between the tracks and then you can set all your metadata inside of the project page ready for rendering and sending it out to streaming platforms or for your clients. Just one final thing I do want to show you, one thing I've omitted to show you here is how to get those spaces back between the tracks. So once we've actually clipped those tracks to where we want, we can literally go through and we can right click, split the events or split the tracks, however you want to set it up. If you then click on the track name, right click here and then reset pause, it then puts the gap between the songs. So let's do that back there for track three, reset pause and there we are, it's already reset that pause between track two, track three, and track one, and track two. So this is a really great way that we can just utilize both aspects of the Studio One 5 Professional, and it's, it's just a really nice, simple, easy workflow that we can really get the most of our masters from. So that is it for this week's video, and for me, this is it's just a fantastic way to get the very best out of Studio One 5. Um, there are things that I would still like to streamline, so macros. I'd like to see if there's a macro, so if you know that there's a way to add a macro, where for example, inside of the mixer console, is there a way to deselect the individual tracks from showing in the mixer window? So rather than going in and actually selecting that little circle and, and getting rid of the tracks that way from the mixer, is there a macro that I can do that automatically? Likewise, once you actually insert the events into the into the song page, is a way you can enable the event effects automatically. That would be really handy. So if you know either way of doing those, please let me know. You may know that one from the template is plugins, and it's for very good reason. So when you start with a blank template and using a template this way until you actually import the event you can't add an event effects because there's nothing to add it to but you could very easily add a chain so if you want to save your own mastering chain so let's just use this one save master energy it's then going to instantly add that mastering chain into the event likewise if you wanted to do it on the master channel this is where you probably could save your plugins here to add it to the template. So if you wanted a limiter, for example, on the master, you can add your limiter here. If you wanted some metering plugins, you can add it on posts and maybe some like sonar works. You can do that all on post and you could add that as part of the template and you could actually save that and that would automatically reload each time you load the template. So that is a good way to do it. But for me personally, I much prefer to use a mastering template without any plugins added because I really like to I like to bespoke process any track. So I really want to listen for what the song needs and then process the song accordingly. And I feel that for me, if I have five plugins added to a particular chain, psychologically I think that I should use all five when I may not necessarily need to. So I don't like plugins, but if you wanted to have plugins, you could easily do it in this method. If you want a copy of this template, I can more than happy to send you a copy of the bank template. Just drop me an email at smudge at masteringitb.com. I'll leave links or I'll leave the email somewhere around the screen. So if you do want a copy of this template, then drop me an email and let me know. As I say, it is a work in progress and I will be updating this over time. But for me, this is a great way where I can really utilize all of the tools and utilities that Studio One Five has to offer. So if you want to know more about digital mastering, please make sure you hit that subscribe button below and make sure you tick that bell and select all to receive notifications and all of our videos moving forward. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up because that really helps with the YouTube algorithm. So the more thumbs up I get, then the more chances of this being shown to other people who want to know more about digital mastering. And if you want to support the channel, and I'll leave links in the description down below. As I say, it's just a link. If you just want to buy me a cup of coffee or a beer, I like coffee and beer. So please feel free to do so. There's no obligation to do so. But if you do want to support the channel, then the option is there for you too. So um, that's on offer as well. And yeah, all that's left for me to say is I hope you'll keep safe and well if you have any questions please let me know in the questions section down below and i'll see you in the next video coming real soon